Wolves. I think Lock King has played the Zig every single game, I believe, except game one. He played Zig every game except game one. Yeah. So a lot of mages coming through from Lock King today, which is consistent Ooh. with what we saw from who's playing the Marksman in the mid lane, Yasuo in the mid lane, and of Versity. I do like that comp. It's once again going to be a heavy dump. Power going to be on very make sure he's gonna be confident here it's the best oriana and see he will lock it in to try to prove it they changed things a while around once before didn't really work out for them so they're back to the same strategy you, you talked about how you might not want to see show this oriana but now we're still looking at a something pretty decent yeah it's a good dive comp the oriana shockwave should be able to come online and enable that quite a bit oh and my goodness. Please like no. you mentioned <laughs> give us that j4 top just lock in and give me that j4 top break them apart then lock them in afterwards it could be the most beautiful <laughs> arena match of just you have nowhere to turn but they're gonna go back with literally the exact same draw from game two I'm not a fan I'll be very honest with you I'm definitely not a fan of the Sarah did you consult your magic Sarah? crystal ball Omo? Yeah, I mean, my crystal ball is kind of shattered to pieces right now. <laughs> All the pick predictions are completely wrong. But you know, Flash Wolves, I think they know better than I do. I hope they have a plan. I think it's because they see the uh, they see both the Rengar as well as the Riven. They know it cannot be a Javan still coming in here. And they feel more confident about right. locking these two Bruiser buddies. Now going for the Lucian once again, I like this adaptation. More secure, more stable than the Akshan. But he still has to deal with Rengar jumping on him. Yeah, that's really the change here. Definitely seeing this Lucian come online. Uh, and hopefully the way that we saw in, in game number three as well, if the Lucian can come online, get strong, get in this game, and really put on the pressure on Fan University, this could be what Flash Wolves have been looking for. Yeah, I mean, I think this was their idea behind the team composition in game two as well, right? But the Javan proved to be such a good answer to them. This time without the Javan, I think they're feeling a bit more confident. However, there is still a Riven to contend with. I do think they will be feeling a little bit more confident about the Riven matchup, though. But it feels like a of a game here, Omo and uh, Grandin, where we're looking at side of Federal Diversity that do have a lot of good scaling. They've got the Rengar that can look to try and accelerate them into that position where the Orion will become a menace, the Corky will become unstoppable, and Nami is just a passenger along for the ride. Let's see what <laughs> happens. Let's jump to our casters for game number four. Infinity and Riku have at it. Thank you very much, Skimmy. We're back into the fourth game of the series. I'm Infinity and this is Riku. It's going to be a do or die for Fel Averti as only one game away for Flash Rolls to take the final. Yeah, exactly. So for the Fennel Adversity fans out there, I mean, it, there is still that lower bracket. If ever, this is going to be a 3-1 finish coming from Flash Wolves. I like the composition here coming from Fennel, though. This is more of a composition which can fight toe-to-toe -to -toe when it comes to the mid-game. So this is something that they lacked in the previous game. Flash Wolves, on the other hand, Olaf pressing Ragnarok, just going him on the back line. So I feel like that is... One of the biggest worries, and the fact that Cookie can potentially steal objectives here and there. Yeah, and what the viewers didn't know, that you know, guys, Riku is a mega mind when in the draft. <laughs> she, pre she predicted the draft, you know what? They're picking up Rihanna, they're gonna pick up Rangard, and going to Corki and Nami <laughs> for foul adversity. Oh, well, they're, they're gonna see that later when we go to the panel. Maybe. <laughs> well, Maybe. wait, no, no. <laughs> they are right. only to fail later. Oh, dear. Yeah. But so far right now, very, very stable for these two teams. They're not going for that hyper-aggression all-in level one for that clash immediately. They're going standard. Lucian into the mid lane, Orion into the mid lane. And bottom lane, you have Greg the Sigs once again for Flash Wolves. And for Adversity, Corky Nami, what do you think about it? Corky Nami can be an oppressive lane depending on your matchup, but this time it is going to be locking on the Ziggs this time around. So the wave clear is going to be supplied. And the fact that there is that a threat of a big engage. Eason has been crazy, playing out of his mind, using this Gragas, and he's feeling, of course, he's gonna use it again, and Final Adversity has to watch out for that big flash body slam setups. They cannot get caught out of position, or else they're gonna be heavily punished by Eason. Definitely. The body slam coming from Eason, especially in that game over three, was flawless coming in from him. So if they can replicate that once again, it would be great for Flash Wall. is uh, having that ward there though. To the bot side river, it gives information for Flash Wall. The doming is near. We gotta go back. We gotta play a little bit more reserved. I mean, it is a Ziggs lane. It's just gonna be there to wave clear and harass as a side mission, see if they can poke out Danny and Raffi, which we can see now, a little bit of that mission accomplished, just 
you know, Rafi is on Nami, so is still able to provide sustain despite the pokes. Yeah, and Donning is just venturing towards enemy territory here, getting that blue buff, which means puts Cookie in a bad situation. Cookie was not able to get the blue buff from a Fennel Adversity, and so far, they lost the blue buff here. So triple buff coming from Fennel Adversity in the first two minutes of this match. A really nice start here coming from Domin. We've seen how Domin can get those early stacks once involved and was involved in some of the early game fights if Flash Wolves does decide to pull the trigger first. But so far, I feel like in this scenario, Bruce is still going to be one of the scariest member, uh, especially now he is on this Lucian. He was pretty crazy as well on the previous game. And of course, we'll see how they can get Bruce ahead without needing, you know, kills and just split pushing on the side. He's not. He's just so amazing when it comes to the mid lane. Um, being available for his team elsewhere as well. So I think that is something we could expect coming for Flash Rolls. But right now, Koki going for the roll on top lane. Isera is on low HP. Is That's going to be Olaf going for the Ragnarok. Wow. But Phil Adversity takes the first blood away from Flash Rolls. Look at Bruce Domain, though, calling Domain. huge damage potential. Domingue jumps in onto Bruce. Actually no takes a kill down. Cookie's on one HP. No. That's going to be the kill for Vettel Adversity once again. Power takes two. I think that was a level up. That's why his HP bar was was uh, saved. But Domingue's read on that and the fade away, flash away after ulting, I believe, for Isera to finish off the kill plus, or rather for power to finish off the kill and then escaping the clutches of Cookie. That is a pretty, pretty baller start for Final Adversity. Baller indeed. I mean, <laughs> flash rolls. <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word, but... I'm gonna Thank consider so it as, yeah, maybe. I'm gonna consider it as my fourth word in my new dictionary. Got we're it. making a new one mm -hmm. in the series. And so far, Final Adversity and what Flash Rose got that initial setup, good engage. But Final Adversity had that better thing in mind. You know what, Doming, quick response, and power just going through into the loopholes of Flash Rose engage there. So right now, with that bad advantage, Final Adversity starting the Rift Herald. Although, even with that, Shock? Flash Rolls still Ooh, even when it comes wave. to the gold. Bruce, actually 1 oh, HP. No, no, no. That's going to be auto attack to finish that kill. Shaw takes one more. Triple kill in the first 4 minutes and 30 seconds of the game for Final Adversity. Look at Shaw. He still wants the kill. He's going to be so advanced. Ezen is right there. Oh, whoa. Wow. That size step coming from Shaw. Misses down the explosive cast. Ezen just going back. He cannot do anything. And Fennel Adversity starting up the Ocean Dragon. Oh. Power 1 HP, that's going to be the flash job for Insar. So much team fights happening all around the map. <laughs> There's just so many fights just happening across. And, you know, all of these outplays, all of these micro decisions that we're witnessing right now from top, you know, the fadeaway coming from power, the fact that Shaw is able to win a 1v2 situation under tower with a magnificent shockwave. Bruce taking aggro. I think that's pretty sweet. Still, though, the gold still pretty even. But so far, not a lot of movement still to uh, get through these objectives. I mean, Rift Herald has already been taken by Fennel Adversity. We'll see, though, where they will utilize this. Possibly, maybe, for its top side to unlock power um, on that ribbon to see if he has more space to be more involved in some of the fights in the other lanes. Yeah, definitely. But look at Fennel Adversity's padding here. Three man roll on top side of the map. Flash rules doesn't have any idea. And Isara is now pinned down. That's going to be Dominic to initiate the fight. Oh, Aquaperson and the tidal wave goes for the CC chain. Power comes through. That's going to be stunned in. But too much damage and power takes the kill down. Beautifully done. Not even needing to drop the Rift Herald just yet. Fennel Adversity. This is a completely different approach. They know that power is able to get early kills, so they're going to play more towards top side and give up the first dragon. It is a different trend from for the past four games that we've seen in this series. So Flash Wolves, so far, the attempts that they have made on their aggressiveness and engage on their tower, di tower dives, Fennel, they have been responding really, really well. Very, very well indeed. I mean, three kill lead already. Every single time the flash rolls, wants to initiate those team fights, want to initiate like a gank. But Adversity is prepared for it. They have their emergency bag readied up. Fell Adversity, if there's a disaster coming through, just have a bag for it. We're just coming through with a bang. I think they're showing up big time currently. But Eason has another thing in mind in the top side of the map. Once again, they're trying to bring down power, but 
clear fast wave potential, disengages to that hold. Yeah, power with a quick wave clear. Mm -hmm. By Inferno Bomb, I mean, at this point, it's not going to deal a lot of damage. We're looking into, again, Rabadon's possibly into the Ludens Echo, or uh, the other way around. For, Fenla, uh, for, for, for Bruce, of course, it is roughly the same thing off of that Essence Reaver Solari Charge Blade into the Infinity Edge, and that's a time Bruce can just keep hammering down, just keep aggressively dashing in. They do have Eason for that Disengage and Peel as well, so we'll see now what Fennel decides to do with this three-man sneaky brush party. No, are they using Danny as bait? Maybe. Could be. That's three feet that's three. Actual, I think they're actually biting onto the bait here, but Cookie comes yes. into the fray. That's Green Ami locked in onto the wall. Lash rolls. Disengages. It's too quick for Fennel and Mercy to react onto the setups that Flash Rolls is doing. And really nicely done by Fennel. They're creating opportunities around the map as much as possible before the spikes happen on the side of Bruce and Locking. And now, Shaw, of course, still on this Orianna. We haven't seen the cat ball combo just yet. Doming, Thrill of the Hunt, put the ball in, set up for a beautiful shockwave. Well, Hula. it's a different story into the bot side. It's going to be a kitty, but a scary kitty. As he jumps in onto Bruce, but two mobile for him. Bruce is going to stay alive, and Fennel Versi will not be able to take the kill. And it is still very safe for Flash Wolves. I mean, Bruce and Locking still has that flash and barrier, so it will take a chain of CC to be able to burn that down or even ensure a kill. We're talking about Bola Strike into an Aqua Prison, perhaps into a Shockwave. I think that is one of the key moments where they can get a pick. But look at that top side, though. Power just dealing a lot of presence and pressure at top. Yeah, I mean, Final Adversity went in for the referral bot lane. I think they were thinking, let's put power into top lane. Potentially push onto the tier 2 turret. He wasn't able to, but this is a statement that Final Adversity wants to make. We want to pressure in all lanes. You destroyed us in game number 2. We're going to destroy you in game number 4. We're, we're possibly seeing a game number five coming through with the pace that this is going. Flash will still no, not getting you know the usual early lead. This could be a collapse coming from Doming. Yeah, Doming is here. Trail of the Hunt jumps in. Isera Stun. follows through. That's going to be Mega Inferno Bomb. Tries to stay alive. That's going to be stunned in. Guillotine will not be able to take the kill. And Felt vs. E takes the Baron lane. Beautiful timing here, Isera. 20 seconds gone, meaning Fennel Adversity can just reset, breathe a little bit easy. That top side is not going to get pressured at all. And then work their way towards this dragon. It is going to be the air drake, and that's going to be important because Domin has been setting up these kills for power. Remember, early game, power got two kills. Domin can just play around that and absolutely just create this monster coming from power on this ribbon. Speaking of a monster. Both Baron Nasher and the Cloud Dragon is alive. And Rengar currently has stacked three passive onto this game. So that's 15% up against Flash Wolves. And Flash Wolves has to keep this in mind. But Fennel Adversity now looking back. 2k HP only for the Cloud Dragon. They're going to oh engage. No. Not going to be able to take the Cloud Dragon. And Flash Wolves is going to pursue this. Body down onto Shaw. Good CC will not follow through. But Cookie will die. Fennel Adversity will take one more kill as they look mid lane. Yeah, Power was very far away. Again, he is the most fed member in this team. He needs to be present in these fights. Pearl Belt, stun coming through. Aqua Prison onto two. That's going to be Flash Wolves in the edge. But not going to fall through for Fennel Adversity as an all in here. And Flash Wolves will be safe for now. That could have been a very crazy shockwave play. But once Power enters, Shaw just passes the ball and uh, just, just let it happen. Now for power, he's 5-1-0. Having that Solari Charge Blade, having that stacking of crits, he's gonna hurt. I got Inferno Bomb just there to see if he can kill Shaw. But the damage is still not enough. Still no Rabidon's death, death cap in the hands of Locking, but it is close. It is very close. So Fennel has to be careful around these objective fights. They cannot dilly-dally. While they do have Pope, Ziggs can be insanely powerful, especially with the Mega Inferno Bomb. Well, Fennel Versity is dilly-dallying. Is that a word? It Into is. the top lane. Well, 
Looks like it. <laughs> a flash rolls, takes a turn in the top lane. But now Final Adversity initiates this fight. Flash rolls will gain Raffy? the dominance here as Rafi is trying to go back, but he is in enemy territory as Flash Rolls takes the support away for Final Adversity. This could be another collapse at top takes side. Takes more. Well, they get the kill onto Shaw, and Bruce will actually use up the flash, but that will be the flash from Doming as well to take uh -oh. the kill down onto Bruce. But Ezen will come, Cookie will come, Locking is here into the fray. Doming will use up the Stasis Enchant to delay the fight, to delay the time. But Flash Wolves at the end will get the kill down onto Doming. That will be 3 for 1 in favor for Flash Wolves. What a nicely done. Kill oh the team. no! Look at that! Shot down gold for the side of Isera. Even though power is a level higher, wasn't able. He he focused down in the tower. I bet he wanted to take down that tower before escaping. But look at his teleport. That means Baron. There's just so many death timers here. Teleports are now being TPs? bought. Yeah, power has TP. Doming has TP. But Flash Rolls has TP as well. Who's the better TP here? It's going down Looks fast. Like Flash Rolls has a dominance onto the Baron's pit. 4K HP remaining. Teleport. Doming's now going for the Doming. TP. Can he make it? He Can he reach in? it? Can he do it? That's going to be tied away. A Fennel Adversity has stolen the Baron Nasher. This is what Flash Wolves needs, but they lost it. Now Fennel Adversity is now catching up. They need to do it. That's going to be a triple kill coming from Shaw. Doming is just going to jump around. That's going to be the ace for Fennel Adversity as they stole it, everything away from Flash Wolves. Whoa, whoa, what just happened? The death timers, the low death timers, the teleport plays. That means that they can immediately dive in. Doming with a magnificent steal. Look at the death timers. They can end. They can end. 10 seconds. 10 seconds on the clock here. Fell adversity can rush it down. Power is going in. He doesn't care about the Nexus turret. He doesn't care about the Nexus damage. It's going to be the fourth game for Fennel adversity as we take it to a distance. Fifth game of the series.